Everybody, welcome back. My name is Yumble, and today I'd like to discuss Vanilla Overpass. Vanilla Overpass is a mod for City Skylines, so there's nothing vanilla about it, but it does work with vanilla roads that come with the game. Uh, it allows you to elevate a section of a six-lane road in order to add a little flexibility to your intersections or create an express lane if you so want to. Uh, the real beauty of it is that it does not increase the footprint of the intersections uh, beneath it. I'm going to show you what that means in just a moment. It's great for adding a, an overpass or even a tunnel in the middle of your city without increasing the size of your roads. Everyone, thanks for being here. Let's check out Vanilla Overpass. We are currently looking at an intersection that's a great candidate for Vanilla Overpass. Basically, Vanilla Overpass, it's a bit of a misnomer. There's nothing vanilla about it. It is very much an asset pack from the workshop that allows you to essentially create a tiny interchange where your four-way intersection should be. Or three-way intersection, it's pretty versatile. But basically, it's not gonna take up any more footprint than what we're looking at here. Uh, currently, there's no light on this intersection, but that's okay. The first thing I'd recommend doing anytime you start building Vanilla Overpass is deciding where the intersection is actually going to happen. So I've, I've already got this 90 degree four-way intersection going on. So let's assume that, oh, I don't know. Let's assume this way would benefit the most from having a an overpass. That is fine. So the way I approach this, the video that comes with it actually does it differently, but I, I have recommendations on how to approach this. So we're gonna go with the two lane road for vanilla overpa overpass. There are several different configurations that you could do, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start with a two plus two plus two type configuration. I'll show you what that means in just a second. Uh, you'll notice I'm using the bridged version of the road, so I'm forcing a bridge. If you use the elevated version, it creates a nice big wall for traffic to to run into, Looney Tunes style. Perfect. So that is the way that I always recommend starting. Uh, then we can decide how far how far down to go. This also works as tunnels, by the way. It's a, it's a bit more difficult in my opinion, but it also works as a tunnel. So I'm just gonna do eight meters high and then eight units down, uh, eight units across, back down to ground rather. And I should be able to use elevated road for these. Now this is actually the, the walled portion is to cover up the thing that we're about to do in just a moment. Now I'm going to go to our six lane road. And I, as I said earlier, I'm using a two plus two plus two configuration. So it comes with three roads, A, B, and C. I'm going to start with road C, I think, because that is the one that actually goes to the intersection. So road C, and I'm going to go about halfway to this. So I've got a nice clean 12 units over using Anarchy. I can just do six units there and the same on the other side, six units. And this will just hide the seam of what we're about to do. So the B road is a nodeless road as it's known. So there's no, there's no node on this one, which allows for some kind of shenanigans that make this whole thing work. So the B road will go from here to here. Now you may notice, here, take, take me as an example. This is what a nodeless road does if you let it do its thing. We do not want that to happen. So a good way to avoid that is actually to brace the node. If you remember, we did six units over. So here, I've braced this road now, if I'm not mistaken. So I should be able to connect it there. Beautiful. And that's how that is supposed to look. So on this side, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it again. The C road, we'll go six units over, and then we'll brace it. Bingo. Doesn't really matter what road you use to brace it, but just make sure to retain the node there. We don't want that node to disappear. It's crucial. The B road is nodeless, and that will connect here. Wonderful. Then when I when I get rid of this. Seamless. So it looks really bad for a moment, but then it ends up looking really good, in my opinion. Um, for the C section, for the C, sorry, for part A rather, I just want to make a two unit connection here. So I'm going to turn off node snapping and two units away from the end of this, I'm going to make, you can see there, precision engineering two units going towards the little interchange here, going towards the beginning of the ramp, two units over, 
and that will give us a nice texture that, they, that we can then manipulate after the fact. So same thing here, assuming everything else has gone right. Two units over, beautiful. Now this road is kind of funny. I'm gonna use move it to show you why. If you go too far, the texture starts repeating. So that is why I recommend starting at two units because it's actually a little bit less than three units. You can see I've gone too far. The texture starts repeating and there we go. This is, I think, pre-intersection marking tool actually where chevrons were, were an unusual thing at the time. Now this road, I would also probably recommend bracing actually. So before I go too far, I'm going to brace here and I'm going to brace here. And let's connect our already existing six lane road to this operation. So I'm gonna go back to the very beginning, vanilla six lane road, no problem. Node snapping back on actually for this. Beautiful, that's exactly what we want. Same thing on the other side. Perfect. Now I'm gonna get rid of the braces. So on this, on, on this piece here, as I said before, the actual amount of the texture for that little part A with the chevrons is less than three units, but more than two units. So I'm just holding alt right now in move it and I'm moving that node so it's as long as it can be. So on the other side, the node with the markings, select it, hold alt to keep it straight and then go back a little bit so the texture doesn't repeat. And that is that is the, the bones of it. Now, there's a little bit of traffic manager that goes along with this too. For these, for the end pieces, it's very, very easy. You can click them and hit Control S. Very straightforward. For this one, you remember the node list bit that we did? This is where the magic is actually happening for Vanilla Overpass. If you Control S this piece, it has no idea what, what you want it to do because it really does not, the game is not set up for this type of thing by default. So you actually have to manually go in and connect the lanes as they, as they should go. Wonderful. Do the same thing on this side. So for this configuration, as I said before, we're doing a two plus two plus two for this. So what that really means is we've got two lanes on the, let's say two oncoming lanes, two lanes going over as well, bi-directional. So one, one lane going to, one lane going from, and then the right side is um, is two lanes as well. So two plus two plus two, the middle is opposing lanes. For this type of configuration, the way that I've set it up here implies that we want through traffic to be able to avoid the intersection, which is great. But what I would do with that information now is deny them straight throughs to force traffic to use the, the overpass. So I'm gonna get rid of these straight throughs and that'll give them an automatic left and right. Uh, this could also be a roundabout. I've actually got a pretty cool thing in the in the Steam Workshop that I call a overpass roundabout, I think. See, I work with roundabouts. I don't just not do roundabouts. <laughs> I do things. Uh, but yeah, essentially it's an overpass and an underpass with a roundabout in the middle, which is dabbling very close to interchange territory. This This is nice because you can make an interchange downtown in your city without actually increasing the footprint of this. So if you already have buildings that have that have come up around this major intersection and you've already got streets and businesses and shops and whatnot in the area, then feel free to go for a vanilla overpass. I think it's a really great option to uh, move tons of traffic without increasing the footprint of what you've built. I'm going to uh, unpause this in just a second. I might install a light before doing it and uh, we'll see how it works. Spectacular. So it has solved traffic on the crossing street, but not on the not on the one that doesn't have the overpass, right? When I say the crossing street, I mean I've put the overpass. Generally, if you're only going to use one of these, I would put it on the road with the most traffic or the most straight through traffic where you will get the most benefit from doing this. But that's not to say that this is the only configuration. It is certainly not. As I said before, I could put a roundabout under here here, I don't think that would actually do it. I don't think that would be quite enough. But I am going to show you one alternate configuration. You'll notice I haven't put the light in here yet. I'm going to put a kind of a two-level light, a two-level, two-cycle light. And the way I'm going to start that is by doing the same thing 
in the opposite direction. So starting at the center, if I can remember where the center is, I'm going to do the same thing. So four units out on both sides, and I've already got this convenient marker in the middle. If you're stacking roads like this, also be sure to be aware of which road you're connecting to. So don't connect to the lower road if you don't intend to. Four units over, another four units over. The rest of this is going to be exactly the same. I'll show you how it looks in just a second. So there it is. We have four identical sides, each with a ground level intersection and also an overpass intersection now. I think there's probably a bunch of different ways to approach this, but I'm gonna pause the game and here is my idea. Here's my theory. I think this will work. I'm going to go to the intersection, uh, the ground level intersection, and I'm going to use no left turns, actually. So I'm going to do straight and straight right on all sides. So no left turns allowed, no left turns allowed, no left turns allowed. And I'm actually going to move all of the left turns up to the top section. Now selecting this is a bit of a trick at times because the game doesn't really account for stacked roads like this, which is why the vanilla overpass mod is so crazy, but uh, very powerful. Just make sure you click on the right road <laughs> when you're going to make changes. So I'm putting all the lefts up top. You could even do like an elevated roundabout up here or a roundabout down below. There's, there's a lot of versatility in this and I'm just going to show you basically uh, two examples today, but feel free to invent your own your own stuff. If I set up a timed light here, I'm going to make a junction. So I've got, ooh, I've got both nodes selected, set up timed traffic light. What I'm able to do fairly simply and with a good pedestrian cycle as well, if I'm not mistaken, I can add step. I'm just going to do maybe uh, five to 15 seconds. This may change later, but 5 to 15 seconds, uh, lower the flow sensitivity for longer phases. And I'm going to allow left turning traffic. Let's see if I can even, even select the right light here. I'm going to allow left turning traffic up top in one direction and straight and right traffic on the lower level. And I'm going to allow opposing traffic to do the same thing. That will be phase one. And phase two is going to be the opposite. So it's going to be a two phase light. Now all of these must stop so that these may go. And I've already set up the arrows manually. I think I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big proponent of doing the arrows manually rather than using lane connectors in an intersection like this. It just, it, it's better in my opinion. <laughs> I'm not going to elaborate on it, but I think it works better. Um, great. So we're going to hit add. The one thing that might concern me is I'm not sure if left turning traffic will be able to clear here. So let's let's let this run for a moment as traffic discovers. Here's here's the big picture. It's just a big intersection in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I'm going to let it run on three speed and I want to see if opposing tra it can't. So one more mod to introduce to the situation for this particular configuration is node controller. I'm actually going to expand this little node in the middle. There it is. I'm gonna expand it a little bit, just enough so that left turning traffic can cross over itself without issue. In this situation too, it might even be beneficial to add a pillar in the middle of this whole thing since there's no left turns down below. I'll figure that out later perhaps, but let's make sure that opposing left turns can, uh, can now make it where they need to go. Not a whole lot of left turning traffic it seems. I just want enough space so they can make their lefts at the same time. Well, see, now that we've expanded the upper intersection, might as well expand the lower one too, right? So we're going to take this one up to like, oh, I don't know, 22 uh, meters seems fine. Another, another way to see if opposing traffic can, can make it is to just visualize it. So this, this one's always turning left. I think they're making it. I'm going to connect all these just for fun. Now, as long as these opposing lefts miss one another and there's a little space in the middle, then we are golden. Look at that. Perfect. I might refine the marking a little bit in just a moment, 
But overall, I think this will clear traffic fine. Uh, for, for a two cycle light, we can actually do longer cycles and have a better result too. So I'm gonna up this from five to 15 to maybe 15 to 25. Cool. I'm going to let that run for a minute and we'll see how it goes. And there you have it, our downtown intersection solution. If you're looking to essentially make a, an interchange in your inner city area, but you don't want to waste a bunch of space, this is a great way to do it. Uh, just to show you the markings up close, this one denotes that there's a bunch of left turns going on. No straight through because of the diamond and no right turns because this uh, kind of bumper is in the way the whole way around. I'm happy with that. And then down below, I've decided to uh, cut, kind of make a bit of pavement, kind of pavement islands <laughs> around here to give pedestrians a break on the way through in, in real life situations. Uh, but other than that, it's been working excellently. Uh, also, if you turn off collision in Fine Road Anarchy, or Fine Road Tools, Fine Road Anarchy, turn off collision and upgrade one of these roads, and you can get that pillar in the center. I decided to put kind of an island around the pillar as well. Uh, there's no left turns, so we can afford that pillar there. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident this will keep up with any uh, downtown level traffic that you can throw at it. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. I uh, really appreciate you watching this uh, latest video on this happiest of New Year's. Uh, I also stream on Twitch, so feel free to check out a live stream there if you get a chance. And of course, we have a community Discord where you can feel free to drop by and post pictures of your city or talk about some vanilla overpass ideas as well. Everyone, thank you for hanging out. Thanks for watching the video. Thank you for subscribing. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.